Hello, I'm Yonash Levinsky, and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them, and tell you everything you need to know. It seems that Russia's grand plans for subversion have backfired in the most hilariously tragic way. Imagine this. Russian intelligence, in all its cunning, puts out a job listing. Not for a secret agent or master spy, no, but for partisans willing to start fires. Yes, you heard that right. For a mere 5,000 US dollars, they tried to recruit people, including a Ukrainian national, to set fire to a paint center in the city of Wrocław, Poland, conveniently located near a fuel depot with 56 million liters of fuel. A bold move, except Polish counterintelligence wasn't asleep on the job. The would-be arsonist was caught with a manual in Russian on how to resist Ukraine's puppet government. Really? That's the best they've got, using foot soldiers with literal instructions to burn down a paint factory? But just when you think this couldn't get any better, it actually does. As if the universe itself was laughing at Russia's failed schemes, a couple of friendly drones hit not one, not two, but three of Russia's own alcohol plants that also happened to be making explosives. Yes, you heard that right. Once again, explosive producing alcohol factories in Tambov and Tula were under attack, causing untold degrees of damage. <laughs> By the way, that's a whole new type of a reaction video. You're not reacting to, you know, brand new music videos or film trailers. You're reacting to explosions deep inside Russian territory. Great stuff. Anyway. As Russia scrambles to find people to do its dirty work abroad, they can't even protect their own infrastructure. Call it karma, poetic justice, or just plain incompetence. Either way, it is clear that the masters of chaos are drowning in their own mayhem. Now, it's official. Russians are now more anxious about YouTube buffering than the possibility of nuclear war. According to the latest National Anxiety Index published by the KROS agency, the top concern for Russians in the third quarter of 2024 is the situation in Kursk. No surprises there. But here is the kicker. While one might assume existential threats like drone attacks, financial corruption, or even the chance of nuclear annihilation might top the list, the slow loading times on YouTube have got the nation really sweating. Yes. YouTube lag has surpassed even the dread of another round of forced conscription. To add to the absurdity, there is also a palpable fear of quadrupeds, though no one's really sure what they are or why they are so terrifying. That is a mystery in itself. And let's not forget the anxiety over the state's crackdown on the so-called child pre propaganda because nothing says personal freedom like the government dictating your own reproductive choices. But if that wasn't enough, Shaman, Russia's propaganda crooner, shocked the nation by getting a divorce, shattering his image as a paragon of family values. Fans are now questioning not only his artistic authenticity, but the moral fiber of the entire country. Moreover, global crises, Russia's got buffering issues and broken marriages to worry about. Guess if YouTube got disconnected completely in Russia for a week, for example, we might be having a 1918 type of situation all over again. So, Moldova's presidential elections have wrapped up, and it is no shocker, pro-Western incumbent Maya Sandu took the lead with 42.45% of the vote. But hold your applause, because this isn't over yet. Pro-Russian candidate Alexander Stoyanoglu, who secured 25.98%, managed to crawl his way into a runoff. Moldova might have one foot in Europe, but Russia still has a tight grip on the other, thanks to its heavy influence in the region and the unresolved situation in Transnistria. Now, Russian propagandists are predictably chiming in, as if Moldova's elections were just a footnote in the grander imperialist vision. They've made it clear, a settlement in Ukraine, mere child's play. 
the real sites are set on, and I quote, returning to the Balkans and Central and Eastern Europe, because apparently for Russia, security means rewriting the borders of half the continent. Регулирование на Украине ничего вообще в принципе не решит. Это даже не передышка будет. Необходимо решение вопроса всего комплекса от Арктического, от Северного Ледовитого океана до Средиземного моря. Но как можно представить, вот произойдет урегулирование даже на удобных для России условиях, назовем так мягко. А что такое российская безопасность, безопасность нашего союзного государства без Балкан? Ну как ее можно в принципе себе представить? Как ее можно представить без обеспечения э, прибалтийского и польского направления? Что, Калининградская область куда-то улетит? Наши границы северной и северо-западной Беларуси тоже куда-то идут? Да, безусловно же, нет. Поэтому я убежден, если мы говорим о долгосрочной перспективе, то это будет возвращение России на Балканы и возвращение России в Центральную и Восточную Европу. Actually, the vision of Kaliningrad flying away got me laughing. Like, why don't we try and invent some sort of anti-grav systems for Russia to simply lift it off and take it away somewhere? Food for thought for our scientific minds. Perhaps Elon Musk might be on the job already. Anyway, this is a reminder that while Moldova is trying to forge a path towards the West, the Kremlin's not so subtle meddling remains a constant threat, not just to Moldova, but to Europe's broader stability. Let's see how things shake out in the second round of the elections, because in this region, no election is ever just about one single country. So, Lukashenko and Putin are suddenly in a rush to build a shiny new highway stretching from Moscow to the Polish border. Let's pause and consider that for a moment. In the era of sanctions, closed borders, and diplomatic frosty stares, the timing is a little odd, isn't it? What, pray tell, does Putin need a brand new motorway for? To export some more banned goods to the West? Highly unlikely. With President of Russia Vladimir Putin, we agreed that in the next time we will discuss the issues of the construction of the magistrale через Беларусь, Москвы на Запад. Добрый, по крайней мере, если западники захотят в этом участвовать, будем до Берлина работать. Нет, до Бреста и в обратном направлении на восток. Это, можно сказать, уже вопрос предрешенный. Но автомобильные дороги у нас не заканчиваются международными республиканскими важными трассами. Now, the real question is whether this highway is less about commerce and more about logistics, specifically military logistics. We've already seen Russia shifting troops and equipment through Belarus during its invasion of Ukraine, so perhaps the grand plan is not to ship luxury cars or caviar to Paris, but to ensure the rapid mobilization of forces along NATO's doorstep. With Poland right there as the entryway to the West, this road starts looking like a lot more of a potential military artery than a symbol of renewed trade, if that ever happens. Whatever the case may be, this move certainly won't go unnoticed. NATO's counterintelligence is undoubtedly keeping a close eye on this new infrastructure project to ensure that this isn't just a road paved with ulterior motives. Also, two things. One, Actually, motorways, you know, they operate both directions, you know, just in case. Russia's military has proven to be not really that adept at its tasks. So what if it falls? A motorway to Moscow? Maybe not the greatest idea of all. Also, given how corruption remains an endemic feature of the system, rest assured that even if the highway never gets finished, quite a few Russian businessmen and officials will have shiny new vehicles and mansions to show for their construction efforts. And with this, we conclude this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.